e-commerce marketing podcast listener. Are you looking to increase traffic and sales to your website? You can do this by launching your own referral program. Just visit getosi.com and sign up for a free trial today. That's getosi.com. Now get ready to hear from your e-commerce marketing expert of the week as they drill down to give you details on marketing strategies that can help grow your business. Welcome back to the e-commerce marketing podcast, everyone. I am your host, Arlen Robinson, and today we have a very special guest, Chris Toy, who is the CEO and co-founder of Marketer Hire, a talent marketplace used by thousands of companies, including Netflix, HP, Angel List, Allbirds, and HelloFresh, to find expert pre-vetted marketers. Chris has been in the industry for 20 years, previously working at global ad agencies as well as operating his own. He was an early digital entrepreneur within the sports industry, launching a leading sports website in the early 2000s that was eventually acquired and a marketing agency that developed early digital strategies with Nike, Umbro, Pele, and more. Welcome to the podcast, Chris. Hey, good to be here, Alan. Yes, thank you for joining me. I'm really super excited to to talk to you uh, today uh, because we're going to be kind of diving deep into a uh, a subject I don't think we really, really covered before. We talk about usually a lot of different individual marketing strategies, but I've never really talked about how to, how to hire a marketing person, which of course is your bread and butter. So we're going to be digging deep into, you know, hiring the right marketing person based on, you know, really the stage that your business is in, because that's really what it all comes down to. You know, there's no one size fits all when it comes to getting the right marketer. It really just depends on, you know, where you're at with your business. So you're definitely going to enlighten us on that. Um, But before we do get into all of that, why don't you tell us a little bit more about your background and, you know, how you did get into what you're doing today? Yeah, no, I I think you covered, uh, you know, all the key parts. You know, I've been in the space you know, been marketing for, for 20 years. I think, you know, besides what you mentioned, a, a key thing is, you know, I started in direct response marketing, um, database marketing, CRM, you know, at, at big agencies in New York. And, mm-hmm. you know, direct response marketing is what became digital marketing, right? All, all right. the digital marketing principles are essentially, uh, you know, data-driven marketing and direct response marketing. And so that was a great foundation for, for me and it, and it kind of, you know, building my different businesses always with, some kind of marketing angle, some kind of you know progressive marketing angle applied to different industries over the mm-hmm. last 20 years really set me up with, I think, a very good viewpoint. You know, I've worked with startups, I've worked with big brands, I've, I've run my own agency, I've worked in-house. Just having those different viewpoints to then getting into, you know, early 2019, where we mm-hmm. launched Market to Hire as, as a, you know, a new platform, a disruptive product to say, hey, you know what, I've been doing this for 20 years every mm-hmm. single way. Um, we have this product that we think is going to change how people hire marketers, right? And, and I think the, you know, the, the variety of experience over, you know, really the entire lifetime of the emergence of digital marketing um, set me up very well to kind of be able to think that through um, mm-hmm. and then design a product that, you know, that worked and, and, and is, is having a lot of success. Yeah, well, that, that's awesome. Yeah, I definitely can tell from your your background and the experience that you've had working in so many businesses at various phases you've kind of, you you really kind of know, you know, what's needed at various points. And that's really key when it comes to hiring and specifically marketing. And that's really kind of where I want to start off. Um, As far as, you know, let's say you're an e-commerce startup business, you're just kind of fresh out of the gate, you're getting things going. Um, You could be self-financed maybe, uh, or you could be, you know, have, um, you know, get got in some finance, you know, either case, what do you think is the most crucial marketing a role that you need to fill if you're a business in that stage. Yeah, you know, I, I think you need someone that you can talk to that has a, a breadth of marketing experience, you know, obviously related to e-commerce that that you can trust and that you can trust more than you would trust your own instincts. I think, right. um, you know, digital marketing uh, has made marketing, has made certain kinds of marketing more accessible, right? A- anyone can run mm-hmm. ads now, go back. Yeah. 20 years, not anyone can, can run a TV spot. Not anyone can even run a print ad. But yeah. anyone can run a Facebook ad, right? You, you can fire it up. And so that makes it more accessible, but that also has, you know, can often lead to first-time entrepreneurs thinking that that makes it easy or, or yeah, they're better right. doing it themselves. Right. Um, it can be very distracting, right? I mean, I mean, if, if you're running an e-commerce business, there's a lot of stuff that you need to be figuring out that's yeah. not how to get good at running you know, Facebook ads. That's not how do I set up an automated 
email welcome series for people who sign mm -hmm. up on my list. And so I, I would start with someone, you know, in, in sort of, we call it either, you know, it could be a CMO, it could be what's called, often called a growth marketer, someone who knows the playbook and knows the strategy, especially for e-commerce is a very standard playbook. I mean, there's a lot of new ones to it once you can start executing it at scale, but the initial mm -hmm. playbook is fairly standard. Yeah. So get someone who can help you roll that playbook out. And more importantly, you touched on it, understand what resources your company has and take mm -hmm. that and say, well, you know, you're bootstrapped or maybe you have some investment. Those pieces are really important, you know, because that's going to define which version of a playbook you can actually do, right? Yeah. There's no, it's totally different to say I have $5,000 or I have $500,000. What should I do? Mm -hmm. Totally different. So, so you really want someone who um, understands that playbook um, that you can rely on to answer questions that are going to come up, you know, weekly around mm -hmm. how's my marketing going? What should we be doing differently? How do we, yeah. how do I think about in my budget? So start with that, that sort of a anchor marketer, you know, again, usually, you know, a marketer hire for us, it's a, it's a CMO or it's a growth mm -hmm. marketer. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. You, you touched on a, a couple of key things there. First off, definitely. I agree with you. The trust is a huge thing, right. especially for a startup, because at that point, you know, with a startup, depending on, you know, how you got going, whether you're a solopreneur or you're with a business partner, you know, you may have a few other people with you there. You're, you know, I have a lot of people in your organization at that point. And so it's very crucial that whoever you bring in is somebody that you can trust because you're really at the ground level and you want to make sure that, you know, they lead you in the, in the right direction. It's, you know, the chance that, it, you know, you roll out your first bit of marketing and it, it's a rocket ship. I mean, that's really yeah. unlikely, right? It's going to be right. a fight for a while. It's going to be defined. Mm -hmm challenges for a while so we define my yep. failure for a while and if you don't have someone that you can look at who can credibly talk to you about well if this didn't work here's why here's what we should try next here's oh it didn't work that's okay that you know we're still going to run that campaign or you know let's focus more on our email marketing like you have to have someone that that has been there before that you trust more than you trust yourself um just to run that function you know just, mm -hmm. just run that function um and i think for marketing it can often, because it's something that all of us have a lot of intuition around, right? If you're not a marketer, yeah. you probably think you know what a good ad is. You probably think you mm -hmm. know what a good message is because it just feels, it's, you know, we've all been cu customers on them. Whereas yeah. if you were like talking about your legal contracts or, you know, you had a financial advisor for your business or mm -hmm. someone who's a specialist in your fulfillment center, you're probably not like asking that person as many questions or like doubting it, right? You're just like, okay, this is an expert. The, the fulfillment center person said to do X, Y, and Z. We're going to do X, Y, and Z. Maybe you folks you ask some questions. But like, mm -hmm. that's kind of the same. That's what, that's what you're looking for from your marketer as well, right? You want someone that fills you with such confidence, that has such credibility yeah. that, that you can just take, you know, 89% of what they say at face value. And of course, mm -hmm. you want to add a, a very important 10, 20% of your own opinions and, and variables to, to the mix. But, you yep. really want to let them do their job. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, the credibility is, is a key thing. You also mentioned one other thing is we're kind of in a space right now where, you know, anyone can kind of go out there, set up a Facebook ad campaign, set up Google ads. All of these tools are out there and, you know, they make it super easy. The bottom line is, you know, of course, these companies, they want to make money. So they got to make the barrier to entry pretty easy. But I think that fools a lot of people because they think, OK, just because it's so easy, it means, oh, OK, you know, I don't need any expertise. I can just go in here. I can manage right. it myself. Um, yeah, I, had a, I heard a, a, an interesting analogy by somebody else that was on the podcast and they mentioned um, you kind of you can liken it to like flying a, a, a 747 you wouldn't ask a a flight attendant to take over the controls of the 747 right. even though when you get in the, pot, the cockpit these days everything's computerized it doesn't really look as complicated as it did back in the day because there's not all these switches and things you right. still wouldn't ask a flight attendant to take over because there's a lot more to it involved in, in flying right. an aircraft and the same thing goes with the marketing campaigns yeah, yeah. you know uh, w w what i use I, I have a lot of analogies for the stuff because <laughs> you're always at recap like again it's part of it we're always having to kind of put it in the framework of something else because right. people do kind of have this opinion about marketing um yep. you know what one i'll use is is you know i i, I like food and, and, and restaurants so i always i often use a restaurant analogy you know if i'm mm -hmm. opening a restaurant it's kind of like that well you know what like why don't i don't cook but like, why don't I just teach myself to cook no. for the first like six months of, the, of, of opening the business? I'm going to open the business. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have customers come in 
and I, I'm just going to cook for a bit because <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, I think I can watch some YouTube videos and figure it out. I think I can, you know, get on Instagram and look at people and I'm going to do it. Like, mm-hmm. does that sound like a good idea for your business? <laughs> like it sounds yeah. okay if you want to like cook at home, but right. if you're putting your business on the line and you're like, I'm just going to hope that I'm really good at this thing. Like mm. that sounds like a really bad idea, right? And, and mm. for some reason, people do apply it to marketing a lot because, like you said, you know these tools feel accessible. You know, mm-hmm. I, I, you just wouldn't write your own legal contract. Like you would never think yeah. about that. I'd be, I'm just gonna write it. I'm just gonna like, Google around a little bit. I'm just gonna write my own mm. contract. Like that would be some really <laughs> right. thing to do. Um, but for whatever reason, mar- yeah, well, not for whatever reason, we know why marketing mm-hmm. has that sense of being accessible. The tools feel accessible. Um, yeah. And like you said, those platforms want to make you think that you can, right? They want you mm-hmm. to say, hey, don't worry, the algorithm will figure it out. And like, that's true right. to a certain extent. Mm-hmm. But what often happens for the early stage on, you know, companies and entrepreneurs that we speak to is they'll come to us or they'll come to me, you know, six months later and say, well, I, I just wasted six months because we were trying to figure it out ourselves. Mm-hmm. Like they don't often don't, the, 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 the hard part is you won't even know. Yeah. If you don't have an expert around you, you won't even know if you were good at those ads or not. You'll just know That's that the true. ad failed. And the worst mm-hmm. thing that can happen if you're a startup is that you burn time and money without learning anything, right? Mm-hmm. So at the end of six months, if you were running your own Facebook ads and you come to me and say, well, my face- Facebook ads don't, aren't working, I'm not going to say, oh, they're not working. I'll say, well, you were running them. So right. I don't know if, if, that, if those will work because I need, an ex- I need you to tell me that an expert ran them and they didn't work. Then yeah. you can draw a conclusion. But I can't draw exactly. any conclusion from you doing it because like you're not an expert. So how, like, yeah. how, how do I know? Right. Yeah. Um, so I, I think that that's a really common kind of end product to people trying to teach themselves that they, they kind of yeah. realize that they don't actually even know anything. And then again, mm-hmm. you waste time money. Yeah. That's that, that happened so many times. Yeah. That's, that's a, that's a definitely a great, great point. So if we, let's say we fast forward a little bit past the startup phase, you, we're dealing with companies that, you know, they've got a little bit of revenue, they got some traction, um, and they are looking to, maybe they had somebody that maybe had dual roles. Maybe they played the role of the marketer, was kind of doing some things, they had some experience before, but now they're at a stage where they've got enough uh, resources to hire somebody solo for the uh, the marketing role. So for somebody that's already re- getting revenue, what would be the most crucial type of marketing role that you need to fill at that point? Yeah, I, I think they're still shifting from like, because um, you're saying they're still they're, they're later stage, but they're still kind of hiring their first marketing role, right? That's kind of what you're yeah. saying. I think it's honestly still kind of the same because you still mm-hmm. want someone to come in who's had that management role to yeah. audit and assess, right? Cross, mm-hmm. cross, cross channel, cross functionally and say, okay, look, here's what's really happening. If I look at your marketing ecosystem, I'm going to look across the channels, I'm going to look at SEO, email, advertising, brand, look at all of it. And here's my assessment. And here's what I think we need to do, right? Okay. That still has to be someone who, you know, CMO or growth marketer who's had that, who's had that uh, management role to be able to mm-hmm. look across, you know, cross channel and cross functional, um, even down to instrumentation, you know, all, okay. the, all the data changes, like attribution model. Like there's a lot of stuff there that if you're, if you're stepping into marketing hiring for the first time, Unless you are a marketer or maybe you have an advisor somewhere, you always want to start with that, that manager role, that CMO, that growth marketer who you can trust and, and has that experience to look across. Because if you just jump right in and say, I'm, I'm just going to hire an email marketer, just to work mm-hmm. on email, I'm just going to hire a Facebook marketer, um, that will still get you results, but yeah. not the right first step. It's just I not the right see. first step. Again, kitchen analogy, you know, hey, I've hired the vegetable chef before my executive chef. Like, mm-hmm. well, I don't know why you did that. That doesn't make sense. Right. right? Yeah. Hire the executive chef, then they, then they can be at the table for hiring the rest of the cooks that you need. Like, why would you hire yeah. one of the cooks before the team meet? Unless my plan is that I'm going to lead them, right? So unless you yourself as the founder, you know, can lead the marketing team, the marketing team leader should come first. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it, especially, actually, the latest, I mean, I shouldn't say especially, but it's, it's as important, but in a different way, right? So when mm-hmm. you're early stage, it's like to answer some questions and to just kind of like figure out probably how to spend your first dollar. It's kind of like scary. So earlier stage, a lot of it is just to kind of shepherd you and hold your hand through mm-hmm. 
you know, just generally a very scary time period, like launching a business. Once you're later stage, you already got revenue. So it's a little bit less about that. It's more about, okay, like if you think you've got sign of life and revenue, you now really need to be making some smart decisions around the business mm -hmm. and how marketing impacts it. And then again, you really need someone who's had that, who's had that strategy level. Um, yeah. For the rest of it, then you just need to hire, you know, executional resources and it's pretty straightforward. Yeah, exactly. Or, or can I hire makes it pretty straightforward. Plug, no. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> well, um, if we're looking at, um, you know, let's say we're looking a little bit beyond this type of company, uh, is it? Would it be any different for, let's say, a company where they're a little bit more established? Their focus is not necessarily on bringing in new customers, but more retaining existing ones, and then maybe converting those existing customers into, you know, other you know, more customers because maybe they have a different product line, that type of thing. Does that take a different type of marketing expertise if we're looking as more of a retention role? Yeah, for sure. For sure. You know, um, you know, I think, I think broadly, if it's a, if it's an overreach, if overreaching strategy, again, it, it can be, it can fall on that CMO, that growth marketer. If it's like, Hey, we want to retain customers, you know, classically by channel, you know, for an e-commerce company, you're talking about, um, you know, you would, mostly be talking about email marketing, SMS, mm -hmm. and database yeah. marketing. But, you know, retention is a, is a part of advertising too, right? Retargeting, right? Retention mm -hmm. is a part of, um, it can be a part of any channel if, if you want it to be. Um, right. So I think, yeah, you know, from a channel perspective, you want to make sure that you're taking care of your customer database and, and um, you know, email marketing is kind of, you know, obviously springs to the forefront. Right. Um, but if you're sitting there as a business and you kind of have a business wide mandate and problem with, Hey, we're not retaining customers. Mm -hmm. That's not just about blasting emails once a week to, yeah, right. Report, right. That, that, that's, that can and should be a holistic strategic approach to say, okay, mm -hmm. like why? Like there's something about our top of funnel advertising, encouraging one time purchases, right? Mm -hmm. Like that, that, that's as much of a, it's something about branding. You know the discounts, right? That there's yeah. other things that influence that first purchase that affect retention, right? Are we bringing in the kinds of customers that might buy more than once? That's mm -hmm. a full funnel question. That's not a you know, uh, and, and and it's a good question that, that you're asking because a lot of brands do uh, don't think about it that way. You know, they'll yeah. sort of acquire a customer any way they can, right? Discount mm -hmm. it, whatever it is, and then kind of like have this big gap. In the life cycle and then at the end be like well now how do i get them to buy again right, right, right. i gave 75 percent off to everybody how do i get them to buy again full price well mm -hmm. kind of have set yourself up for a little bit of a tricky transition there so mm -hmm. if you really want to work on that it's again a full of really a full funnel life cycle question you know the the short term easy answer is email marketing <laughs> right mm -hmm. I, I, I did a right. small thing but the gotcha. proper answer is you know you really want to step back and evaluate end to end all the mm -hmm. factors that go into a customer that is buying your product over and over again. That's, mm -hmm. a, that's a big question, right? That's a, that's a big, you know, all, all the way up to customer personas and, 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 and segmentation. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. All that has to really be considered for sure. Well, as, as we get ready to wrap things up, um, if you don't mind kind of sharing maybe some examples of companies that you guys have worked with um, or just some that, you know, you're familiar with in general that have really been successful, you know, filling the role of a marketer and, you know, what specifically did they do? Who did they go after? And, you know, how did that, how did that change their business? Yeah. You know, we, we had one, um, there's, there's a, there's a company, uh, called Alter, um, which is, uh, uh, outdoor furniture startup. So, um, okay. sort of in, in the vein of, you know, like Warby Parker and Casper and so that, but, but, but outdoor mm -hmm. furniture, you know, um, uh, and they, they were doing well. Um, and they came to us, uh, uh, came to market hire and hired a Facebook marketer, um, okay. to kind of scale that channel. And it was like right before COVID hit, okay. um, last year. And so they were kind of just, you know, on this really good, really nice trajectory. And then COVID hit, and obviously that forces everybody outside and forces everybody mm -hmm. to stay at home. And so they just got this like tidal wave of potential SEO traffic, potential Facebook interest, like just everything was just like like fire, right? Like like everything was hitting. Right. And you know, the the marketers and that they hired from us 
really were able to help them capture that demand uh, instantly. Um, mm -hmm. Well, the market Savannah uh, for from our platform, um, and and that's, that's, that's actually one of the case studies on our website. If, if they want okay. sales, um, and they, I mean, they were, I believe, one of if not the fastest growing D to C brand um, wow. last year. I mean, I mean, like on gotcha. their numbers, but like unbelievable growth. You know, going into mm -hmm. um, seven figures a month in in, in ad spend, I believe, um, like gotcha. constantly. That's from, that's from. that's really that's huge, yeah. And you know, like you <laughs> yeah, said, it's, it's yeah. really kind of, uh, you know, a lot of it was the timing, like you said, with the COVID, and then the fact that they yeah. did leverage people, everybody being at home, so many more people being on social media, and then hitting it really hard with the the, the Facebook. Yeah. But, but if you, know, you don't social, have the right talent media. there, you know, at the, I mean, think of how sudden that is. If, if you don't yeah. have the right talent there to say, okay, like, I know how to, I know how to ride this wave, right? Mm. Like, like it's happening. But there, there are other companies where that's happening and, and you don't tap into it, right? So, yeah. so to have the right team in place, and they had, they had a great um, uh, uh, head of marketing as well. They, they had a, a really strong marketing team, uh, but on, on the paid social, they didn't really have anyone that they liked. And so, mm -hmm. you know, um, uh, that was something where, you know, kind of watching in real time to see a company, like, basically fully tap into uh, a, a, a circumstance right mm -hmm. uh, uh, uh that was presented to them like instantly and then scale it like that was really that was really exciting and very rare mm -hmm. very rare yeah. to see right you, you don't really see a company just like absolutely own mm -hmm. a major event <laughs> over, yeah. like, over like yeah. a year or like a year right like it's just mm -hmm. so it's almost like the event and just to watch them tap into that through marketing mm -hmm. and just yeah. like set their business on fire was, was crazy mm -hmm. it was like watching a year-long black friday yeah definitely that's that's probably like it is uh how it could have been or how it was that's that's awesome yeah thank you for sharing that i really appreciate that and um i definitely have learned a lot we appreciate you having you on uh chris and lastly before we let you go i always like to close out with a kind of final fun fact if you don't mind sharing something that you think our audience would be interested to know about you a uh, fun fact um yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, the website you mentioned was there was a uh, there was a time where I, I had one of the biggest uh, soccer websites. I'm a big soccer fan. Um, I don't know okay. big soccer websites uh, on the internet, and and was getting flown around to all these different games as, uh, uh, wow. around the world as one of the early uh, when when bloggers were like you know today's gotcha. influencers like bloggers right. were a big deal back then. <laughs> so that was that was a period of my life which was fun. You know, getting flown around okay. by different brands um, that was cool. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's, that's awesome. I know that was an exciting time for you. So uh, yeah, seems like you've definitely done a lot. Uh, well, thank you for sharing that as well, Chris. Uh, lastly, before we let you go, um, if you don't mind letting our listeners know uh, what's the best way for them to contact you, if they want to pick your brain anymore about hiring marketing people or yeah, digital sure. marketing in general. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you, you can sort of follow me or DM me on Twitter I'm at Chris toy. Um, you can also ping me, uh, uh, on email, maybe I won't pass my email out, but but you go to marketerhire.com and uh, you know if you need marketers, we'll, we'll we'll help you out. Otherwise, Twitter is probably the best way. You, you tweet at me or or shoot me a DM. I'm always happy to to talk shop. Okay, that's awesome, and uh, thank you for sharing that. Also, wanted to mention that you guys have a special promo. Um, you guys are sponsoring this episode, and uh, you guys have a promo where you're going to be covering the first five hours of any new customer. Uh, that comes uh, to you guys, as long as they mention that they heard about you guys from the e-commerce mar e marketing podcast. Uh, that's all they need to do. And uh, you guys will cover the first five hours of any new customer. So we appreciate you offering that, Chris, to, to any of our listeners and I definitely encourage people to take advantage of that. Sounds good. All right. Thank you, Chris, for joining us today on the e-commerce marketing podcast. All right. Thanks, Arlen. Appreciate it. All right. Take care. Thank you for listening to the e-commerce marketing podcast. If you've enjoyed this episode of the e-commerce marketing podcast, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, and share it with everyone you know.